Hey, Steve here. Uh, today is July 24th, 2019, and I'm in uh, Glen Allen, Alaska. Passed into Alaska two days ago, and um, the last video I made left off in Watson Lake. So just to, uh, it was a relatively uneventful ride from here to there, but to summarize, uh, I stopped into Whitehorse and camped there a couple days. I was able to find uh, some, some nuts for my motorcycle, which uh, mostly resolved the problem of noise and whatnot, but I still think I need a, a gasket or something because I can still hear, uh, it's still pretty loud, and also I can smell, you know, uh, engine fumes coming up through the um, through the front of the motor. Um, also, I met a couple, a uh, nice a couple actually, a, a guy and a girl, Ryan and Natalie, who were on their honeymoon from Houston, and so we shared a campsite one night and we shared a bunch of stories about motorcycle adventures and breakdowns in the middle of nowhere and um, bear encounters and all kinds of fun stuff that you run out uh, run into out here so I um, want to say uh, congrats to you guys and enjoy your uh, life together uh, I had three stories also that I wanted to share and I think I'll do one of those stories here at this campsite I'm at called Dry Creek and then the other two I'll share along the way today. Maybe I'll find a scenic spot to stop and uh, tell a story. So story number one out of three is um, about five nights ago when I was camping somewhere. Um, I, I uh, was in my tent sleeping in the middle of the night. And then um, basically I, I woke up because something <laughs> ran across my face. Some type of uh, something big like an animal. And um, so I wake up. And I just kind of freak out, and there, there's this animal in my tent, and it's um it's darting around, and I somehow managed to grab a piece of cloth in the pitch darkness, maybe my pillow or something like that, and and smother this animal, and I'm holding it down, and it's whiplashing back and forth, going crazy, and then somehow it gets out, and it burrows itself into the corner of my tent, where I had a pile of like uh, stuff sacks and clothes and stuff like that, and so I'm on high alert here, thinking. Frick, I gotta get rid of this rodent or whatever it is. I was thinking it may, maybe it's like a squirrel or a chipmunk or something like that. Some type of small animal. Uh, it's in my tent. It's in the corner. And I need to get it out of here. So I um, I open, slowly lean up, and I open my um, my zippers and put, stuff them up there so that there's an exit here and a big exit here. Thinking this animal, if I can get it to move, it's probably going to exit my tent. And so then I, um, I basically reach slowly and I grab my headlamp and I turn it on, half expecting something to jump at me when it sees this light. So I turn it on, and I don't see anything. And then I, I take my foot and I kick that pile of clothes, and nothing nothing moves. And uh, so then I start to get more brave and start to peel things back, and and um, a thought gets in my head of, um, did I actually did this? Is this happening, or did I potentially have a dream? that an animal ran across my face in my tent and it didn't never actually happened. And so as I'm kind of waking up, because I'm still in this delirious half dream state, I come to the conclusion finally that after I move everything in my in my tent, I spent 30 minutes at 3 a.m. digging through everything, there's nothing in my tent. And I inspect the side of the tent, there's no holes. Um, there's no animal droppings, nothing. So basically, I spent about 30 minutes of one night freaking out for no reason because I had a dream that an animal was in my tent and it wasn't in my tent. I've never had a dream before where <laughs> it's uh, so confusing between the, the dream and reality, but uh, that, that was just a crazy night. Anyways, I thought that was kind of funny and uh, interesting and hopefully my camp neighbors didn't hear me just going crazy, uh, but I'm sure they did for a little while there. Uh, so anyways, I'm going to uh, pack up. I got I'm doing all kinds of laundry and, and um, I did some journaling. I got crap everywhere. So I got to clean up here, get on the road. I got 200 miles to Anchorage. Um, also, uh, uh, yesterday I met a nice guy named Doug. He lives in Anchorage and he invited me to crash at his place. And he's a motorcyclist as well. He's like, yeah, if you want to do some laundry and take a shower, you know, which is as a motorcyclist, when you're out there, you, uh, you appreciate that kind of offer. So I'm going to take him up on that if I can get a hold of him. And um, yeah, I'll stop and tell some more stories later. Okay, see ya, bye.
Hey, so found a good scenic spot here to share story number two. Um, riding towards Anchorage and uh, starting to hit some uh, great mountains with um, that thing down there. I don't know, it looks like a glacier uh, ravine or something like that. It looks really cool to me. Um, maybe I'll get more up close and personal with some of those soon. So story number two is uh, about five days ago when I was riding Highway 37, uh, the Cassiar. Uh, that's a long drive with basically no cell phone coverage at all. At one point I had camped and the next morning when I departed camp, this is near Dees Lake, um, there I passed a, a, a white pickup truck that was just uh, smoking. It had been on fire and um, there was a park ranger there, uh, not really doing anything, but at least parked uh, near it, or probably phoning it in or something. Anyways, when I finally got to some cell phone coverage, I um, turned my phone on and um, received quite a few texts and messages asking if I was okay. Uh, and come to find out, there had been a, um, there was big news on the Cassiar. So there had been a, uh, two guys who um, murdered some people. Uh, I don't know how many. And then as well as there was a suicide, uh, that seems kind of um, coincidental there. And then um, I guess their, their vehicle, they lit it on fire. And so I don't know if that was the exact vehicle I passed or not, but um, I never saw any of these guys or ever felt in danger, but uh, suppose I was camping pretty close, like five or 10 miles away from uh, potentially some big news in that area. I imagine something like that doesn't happen very often in, uh, in, that, in that neck of the woods. So anyways, I'm fine, nothing happened, but that's story number two. I, in fact, am still alive, uh, did not get murdered, and um, I'm headed that way. So I'll catch you soon, bye. Okay, so I've been riding for another hour or so and I found this nice uh, chocolate milk river here. So I thought it was pretty scenic and uh, I'd like to tell you story number three. Story number three happened yesterday. I was uh, riding, oh there's some like weird skeleton bones down there. That, I don't know what that is. Anyways, I was riding um, uh, somewhere into Alaska, like just my, on my way in and I hit a big patch of construction, maybe 10 or 15 kilometers. and. The way they deal with that up here is um, it's all dirt road and they spray this uh, calcium stuff on the road. It's uh, it's really slippery to drive through. Anyways, they also have pilot cars. You have to come to a, a person holding a stop sign. You have to wait for a pilot car to show up. It takes about 20 minutes. And then the pilot car leads everybody through the construction for 10 miles or whatever until, you're, until it's over. So anyways, I'm sitting right by the stop sign waiting for the pilot car. And along comes a construction truck spraying that calcium whatever it's called uh onto the road and then um right before it gets to me it is it, it turns the switch off and so the liquid stops and the guy stops and he's basically chit-chatting with the the girl who's holding the stop sign so i start thinking in my head you know what would really suck is if he just flipped that switch on and uh all you know my my the the, the tube that all the liquid comes out significant volume of, of stuff right by my face basically and so anyways uh i'm on my phone i had uh internet so i was checking my uh email or something the guy goes to leave and i'll give you one guess what happened next he switches the thing on blasts me and the girl and and my phone with uh just a ridiculous amount of this liquid so he goes down about 50 feet stops the truck comes running and he goes oh i'm so sorry i hit the wrong button uh, are you okay? And he asked the girl if she's okay. And I said, yeah, but is that stuff, I'm fine, I'll dry out, but is that stuff bad for electronics? And he goes, oh, it's just water. It's just water, it's not the calcium stuff. So uh, I was really happy to hear that. Anyways, uh, <laughs> I thought that was the end of it. I started to dry out after the ride to get through the construction. 30 minutes later, I stop at a gas station and notice my phone is half dead on battery. And I think that's weird, it's been plugged in the whole time. Well, my phone stopped uh, holding a charge. Uh, all that water just blasted up in there. And so I thought immediately, oh crap, I'm so screwed. Like my phone is so pivotal to this trip, not only for uh, 
pictures and film and stuff, but mapping and looking stuff up and calling for help. Uh, and I just started to think, what if I need a new phone and how much, how many days it's going to take me to move everything and set everything up. And so anyways, I didn't want that to happen. So I went to an IGA. There happened to be one in that town there, a little grocery store, got a bag of rice, spent about an hour with uh, rubbing alcohol, picking crap out of the, the charging port and cleaning everything. And then I let it sit on rice all night and lucky I got really lucky it's now holding a charge or it's charging using the cord so uh, I'm able to take this footage and um, I'm gonna do a better job at keeping my phone covered up <laughs> when there's construction around or anything that can blast me with water um, sorry if this video is a little loud I'm right by this huge river but I thought it was kind of cool anyways this has been a great drive uh, I'm almost to a city called Paul Palmer maybe 30 miles away and about 70 miles from Anchorage. So I'm gonna keep going here and uh, talk to you soon. Bye. last video here so I made it to the ocean uh, behind me is um, part of the Pacific and I'm in Anchorage so uh, a little park um, that I found so yeah feeling pretty accomplished that I did all that riding that I just rode a motorcycle from Austin Texas to Anchorage Alaska um, this is just the start of my Alaskan adventure I'm gonna go south here to the Kenai Peninsula and uh, have some fun for sure hopefully make new friends and all those things um, but yeah, just uh, want to say thanks for following this adventure here, and um, that's about it, I guess. See you guys next time. Bye.